Welcome back. This video is about AWS Global Cloud Infrastructure, which is the backbone of AWS. Now, let's go to the AWS Global Cloud Infrastructure web page to get more details about it. This is the web page of AWS Global Cloud Infrastructure. As you can see here, it says that it is the most secure, extensive, and reliable global cloud infrastructure for all your applications. The important point here is whether you need to deploy application workloads across the globe in a single click, or you want to build and deploy specific applications closer to your end users with single-digit millisecond latency. Single-digit millisecond latency is an essential point. AWS provides you with the cloud infrastructure where and when you need it. You can read further details on this web page, but we'll shortly visit some of its parts. The AWS Global Cloud Infrastructure is the most secure, extensive, and reliable cloud platform. AWS offers over 200 services as of this recording. It not only allows you to deploy your application across the globe with a single click, but it also allows you to build and deploy specific applications closer to your end users with single-digit millisecond latency. It helps millions of active customers from virtually every industry to build and run every imaginable use case on AWS. This was a high-level overview of AWS global cloud infrastructure. Now we'll look into some other important concepts, which are very much related to AWS global cloud infrastructure. The first important concept to understand is AWS region. What is the AWS region? AWS has the concept of a region which is a physical location around the world where AWS has clusters of data centers. In other words, an AWS region is a physical location with clusters of data centers. As you can see in this diagram, this AWS region has three clusters of data centers. One cluster is here, the second cluster of the data center is here, and the third cluster is here. These clusters of data centers are interconnected. Let's go to the AWS Global Cloud Infrastructure webpage to see some examples. As you can see on this map, blue circles are the AWS regions, and red circles are coming soon. Let's start with North America. AWS has a region in Northern Virginia. AWS has a region in Northern California. AWS also has a region in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Let's go to Australia. AWS has a region in Sydney. Let's go to South Africa. AWS has a region in Cape Town. Let's go to some European countries. AWS has a region in Ireland. AWS has a region in London. AWS has regions in Paris, Frankfurt, Germany, Italy, and Milan. Spain is coming soon. Let's see here. AWS has a region in Tokyo. Let's visit Middle Eastern countries, Bahrain and UAE coming soon. And now in India, AWS has a region in Mumbai, and AWS region in Hyderabad is coming soon. You get the idea. AWS has regions all across the world. Again, the region is basically a cluster of data centers. So, whenever you hear AWS region, you have to think about that, okay? It's clusters of data centers. That's the whole concept. So, I think you've got a high-level understanding of the AWS region. Now next, another important concept in AWS is AWS Availability Zones. It is also called AZ in short. As we talked earlier, AWS has clusters of data centers on multiple locations around the world. The location containing clusters of data centers is called the AWS region. That being said, an individual discrete cluster of the data center is called AWS Availability Zone. Another way to understand is that an availability zone is one or more discrete data centers with redundant power, networking, and connectivity in an AWS region. Let's go to AWS Global Infrastructure to get more details about the AWS availability zone. As you can see, for instance, the Northern Virginia region has six availability zones. The Northern California region has five availability zones. Similarly, Sydney has three availability zones. And let's go to London, see it has three availability zones. Let's simplify a bit. In an AWS location or in an AWS region, there are clusters of data centers spread across the location. And an individual discrete cluster of data centers is called AWS availability zone. AWS availability zones in the region have connectivity with one another. 
So these availability zones are connected with one another. To strengthen the concept further, I would like to share this point. A common misconception is that a single zone equals a single data center. In fact, each zone is backed by one or more physical data centers with the largest backed by five, while a single availability zone can span multiple data centers. No two zones share a data center. I hope you feel comfortable now with AWS region and AWS availability zone concept. Another concept related to AWS global cloud infrastructure is AWS local zones. AWS local zones are a type of AWS infrastructure deployment that places AWS compute, storage, database, and other select services closer to a larger population. Let's go to the AWS local zone web page to get more ideas about it. This is a web page about AWS local zones. And here it says that AWS local zones are a type of AWS infrastructure deployment that places AWS compute, storage, database, and other select services closer to a larger population. With AWS local zones, you can easily run applications that need single-digit millisecond latency closer to end users in a specific geography. This is an important line, actually. With AWS local zones, you can easily run applications that need single-digit millisecond latency closer to end users in a specific geography. AWS local zones are ideal for use cases such as media, entertainment, content creation, real-time gaming, live video streaming, and machine learning inference. So the key takeaway is that if you need single-digit millisecond latency closer to your end users in a specific geography, look for AWS local zones. Another important concept is AWS Wavelength which is an AWS infrastructure offering optimized for mobile edge computing applications. Let's go to the AWS Wavelength webpage to get more ideas about it. This is the AWS Wavelength webpage. Here it says that AWS Wavelength is an AWS infrastructure offering optimized for mobile edge computing applications. Wavelength zones are AWS infrastructure deployments that embed AWS compute and storage services within communication service providers' data centers at the edge of 5G network. This is the key point. So application traffic from 5G devices can reach application servers running in wavelength zones without leaving the telecommunication network. This avoids the latency that would result from the application traffic, having to traverse multiple hops across the internet to reach their destination enabling customers to take full advantage of the latency and bandwidth benefits offered by 5G networks. You can read more detail about it. The key takeaway is that if you are deploying applications to leverage 5G, look for AWS Wavelength. I think you've got a good understanding of AWS global cloud infrastructure.